Something a little different today. This week's vlog is taking a little longer than usual because you'll see. But in last week's vlog, you'll remember that I checked out Hero Forge, an awesome website where you can make your own custom miniatures. In that video, I mentioned that I'd never really played D&D much, and a good friend of mine and a fantastic content creator, Masked Bandit, got in touch with me and said, I'm running a little campaign at the moment, you've got to come and play with us. So I set to work making my character, who ended up being Nat Fitzwhistle, a gnome snake oil salesman. I had an absolute blast playing Dungeons and Dragons with the group and definitely want to play more. But when creating a character, I personally work very well visually and really wanted to have an idea of what the guy looked like before I really started to flesh out the rest of him. So I turned to Hero Forge again, but I thought this time it might be a good idea to compare some of the other options out there. So in this video, I'm going to show you four different ways of creating a custom miniature online, Hero Forge and three others, and we're going to compare them and see which one turns out the best. Spoiler alert, they all kind of have their own little strengths and weaknesses. But here we go, let's have our very first ever custom miniature design off. So first up was the one to beat Hero Forge. This is easily the most feature filled one, uh, the one with the best budget, the one with the best advertising. Uh, it was originally kickstarted a few years ago and they're currently working on a new campaign to provide color miniatures as well. That includes both color printed miniatures, which is very new technology, but also it looks like they're setting up uh, the ability to actually pay for painters at their studios to paint them for you at various different levels you know table ready showcase ready that kind of thing uh, which is really quite impressive but here I'm just going for a plain resin 3d printed STL file that I can download myself and print myself as well you can definitely tell that this one is really feature packed it has lots and lots of details especially the uh, the items that can go on a character's back on their hands on the bases all that sort of stuff uh, what I really wanted to do with these was push to try and do something a little bit different and not just do a guy with a sword or a or a mage something like that there are a hell of a lot of weapons in all of these but I really want to try and push and see what uh, sort of ancillary character style stuff they had so here with our snake oil salesman I really I really wanted the steampunky top hat with goggles, I wanted potions, a medicine or a doctor's bag, uh, you know, lots of pockets, lots of places for vials and things like that. And Hero Forge did not disappoint, they had lots of different options. The file costs $7.99, that's US dollars. If you wanted a printed one for yourselves, it would be $29.99. Overall, Hero Forge did not disappoint here. Next up is Eldritch Foundry, a really nice UI I felt here, it flowed really well. My main issue with it is that as you can see the images I'm having to click there are really quite small and a lot of the time you couldn't really tell what they were until you clicked them and put them on your model. So what I'd really like to see there is the magnified as you hover your mouse over them or even just a name, a tooltip that comes up that says peasant clothes, aristocrat jacket, that kind of thing would really help to know what I was looking for. Uh, but otherwise pretty decent selection clothing wise the one thing that really let Eldritch down was their relatively poor customizability of the actual model in as uh, much as how the, uh, the the joints can be laid out and moved and the poses that you can be given and also the uh, the ancillary items there the things that can be held and stuff there wasn't a single potion for my little dude to hold there and even though the uh, the image for back item that you click is a little sort of backpack with pockets that wasn't actually one of the items you could place on here so not bad a nice looking model I think it turned out pretty well looks wise but not really that much customizability here this one's probably better if you're looking for just sort of basic warriors and mages that kind of thing uh, even still the good really good thing with Eldritch Foundry is the price only two dollars fifty cents for the file uh, but if you are getting them printed a little bit more expensive at thirty five dollars next up is desktop hero this one really, really disappointed me, if I'm honest. The UI is incredibly clunky, it's incredibly slow to load. I often couldn't take items off and clicking a new item just placed it over the top of the old one. You know, for instance here, I've got a tunic, I'm trying to click the tunic and it puts another jacket over the top of it. For some reason the arms are separate to the body piece, which kind of makes sense for customizability, but very difficult to follow. Uh, at one point, 
he just lost his arm. One arm, one arm got deleted, and they couldn't find a way of putting an arm back on him again. When I tried to decorate the arms, it, it would only let me put the right arm on and not the left arm on. Uh, there wasn't a gnome or a dwarf actually, so I made him a human size here just to kind of finish the process. But I really didn't enjoy this, and I really wasn't happy with the results. The only real sort of bonus that uh, desktop hero has is that the uh, it, it's priced by item and you can see there there's little bands on the items individually that say things like fantasy or sci-fi and you can actually buy the sci-fi or fantasy packs or you can just pay individually per item uh, literally like there will be a couple of different tunics that are free but a maybe slightly fancy one might be a dollar or to have a certain sword it might be two dollars and that kind of can work quite well if you're looking to create sort of uh, filler models you know townsfolk some armies that kind of thing stuff where the actual characters looks aren't so specific they're not necessarily named npcs they might do well for that you could technically make free stl files if you pick and choose from a, a sort of limited range but overall not great this one i've made here would have cost 16 dollars to uh, to download if I hadn't bought any of the packs or it would have cost $18 to print I mean that kind of tells you there's a bit of a problem with their pricing structure there and finally Anvil I assume it's pronounced Anvil the logo is an Anvil but it's A-N-V-L uh, this one really surprised me I hadn't heard of it I only found it having googled you know custom miniature creators uh, but I really was impressed with this one it has lots of different options uh, lots of different um, styles of uh, character lots of ways to pose that character it had everything i was looking for it had the steampunky goggles on the top hat it had the suit the tux type suit it had medicine bags potions really impressed me this one uh, the one thing it does that's slightly different is that it will um uh, name the pieces to a uh, to a race so it doesn't necessarily say floppy hair it will say dwarf hair it doesn't necessarily say uh, you know, handlebar moustache, it will say gnome moustache, and that was a little funny to figure out what I wanted to do with it, but overall I've actually used a halfling model here and shrunk him down a little bit, but there was quite a good range of uh, scope for the body there, you can see I was able to make him a little chunky, uh, have a little bit of a pot belly on him, which is something I wanted. One thing with a lot of these models, and it kind of makes sense with this sort of modular building, is that they're all pretty buff and uh, and well built and it's difficult to make them like fat basically but that makes sense with the way that these models are put together the, the clothes would often stretch over and look a bit silly uh, but this one had lots of really great poses pretty much did exactly what i wanted to and again it was pretty well priced the download here was $4.97 uh, and the resin print will have been $19.97 uh, so actually really well priced and a really good selection not quite uh, as good a selection as hero forge but a really really strong runner up here so in the end while i think hero forge has probably come out the best overall i actually went for the anvil version of the miniature I just felt that the, the the face was a little bit more friendly and a little bit more sort of the the sneakiness and stuff was a bit more hidden with the features that he got and it just sort of suited me the best. Uh, overall, I think Hero Forge, just from the pure amount of options it has, is probably still the winner here. But I think it's maybe worth having a look between Hero Forge and Anvil. They were the two that really impressed me the most. And here is the finished product. I'm afraid I haven't got around to painting him other than giving him a bit of a Xenothal Prime. But you can see the detail there is really fantastic, especially on the uh, the bag he's carrying there and the, the rucksack on his back. Came out really well, printed really well, really happy with how he's turned out. Uh, very much looking forward to playing him again and uh, yeah big thanks to Anvil and Hero Forge and you know all of them they've all got you know little things that uh, you know going for them but I think yeah Hero Forge or Anvil are probably the way to go with these models in the future I'm already designing more on there it's a little bit addictive to be honest with you I've got no current plans to play D&D in real life or even DM D&D in real life which is what these figures are really useful for but I've already started making voodoo type uh, witch doctors and ogres and trying to come up with all cool different little bad guys that a team would have to go up against. It's a little bit addictive to be honest with you. Thank you so much for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. Till the next one, be good.